Organogram is the latest cannabis company to list at the NASDAQ, and that is a hard bridge to cross because very few cannabis companies have been able to list here at the NASDAQ. And joining me now is the CEO and the CFO of Organograms, Greg Engel and Paolo DeLuca. So, Greg, why did you want to come to the NASDAQ? Yeah, I mean, certainly we had seen uh, a big influx and change to our investor base where we were getting much, many more U.S. investors um, trading on the OTC and the QX. And then as we've been meeting with, uh, you know, investment funds through the U.S., we're all seeing a shift in terms of uh, large funds and more traditional kind of long-only funds that were looking to invest in us and looking to invest in the space, but weren't able to do so until we were listed on one of the major exchanges. So we saw a phenomenal opportunity to, to join the NASDAQ and become, become part of that family um, because really, you know, we're a company that's really focused on technology and innovation, and the NASDAQ is really founded on technology and innovation. And so great opportunity for us, and so far on day one, great response from investors. You just recently made a big investment in a chocolate company. We know that the edible market is going to be coming up in Canada fairly soon uh, at the end of the year for adult use. Why chocolate? Why not gummies or some other form factor? No, it's a great question. So we've invested in chocolate technology ourselves, actually. So we're kind of put a $15 million investment into kind of purchasing and acquiring the leading systems for developing chocolate. When we look at U.S. state data, for example, with Colorado, we see that when the edible forms, chocolate is definitely one of the leading, if not the leading form consistently. And we have a team that really has a long history of working in chocolate uh, across a couple of different companies. So we saw as an area, we're a company that focuses on premium product, uh, and we saw it as a way to differentiate ourselves with you know, a premium line and a, a mainstream line of really the best quality chocolate we could bring to market. And having that capability with leading innovative equipment allows us to produce a broad range of chocolates and really allows us to bring something unique and different. When we go into a category, we want to have a strong ownership position of that category um, and have a big portion of it. So that's why we chose chocolate as one that we think we can dominate in. And what about the CBD category? You recently said uh, comments about supply and issues there. What is the situation on that? Yeah, like we're seeing here in the U.S., in the Canadian market, there's overwhelming demand for CBD. And so um, the difference being in Canada, where CBD is still very much restricted uh, to licensed producers like Organogram, and we're able to access um, hemp, uh, CBD from hemp in Canada, but certainly until just last year, we didn't see much of that produced. So uh, we actually formed a partnership with a company in Canada called 1812, which has a very high CBD hemp they harvested last year. So we're processing 6,000 kilos of that product to convert into pure CBD product to bring to the market in the near term. And then we're looking to expand that relationship for 2019 because there's a huge demand for CBD in the market. You've accomplished something that not a lot of cannabis companies have accomplished, and that is you've had positive EBITDA for three consecutive quarters. What is it that you're doing as a company that these other companies are, are not accomplishing? Yeah, maybe I'll start off and answer that and then turn over to Paula, but you know, w we differentiate ourselves by being the largest indoor production facility in the world versus greenhouses. And so um, being an indoor producer, we can control our environment day in and day out, and we produce a high quality product. We did that to focus on quality, but ultimately our yields are so high that it impacted costs. So maybe I'll let Paulo answer that a bit further. Great, thanks. So um, our cash cost of cultivation is uh, 65 cents last quarter, all in cost, including share based compensation and depreciation was 85 cents a gram. That's the cheapest in the space from uh, what we can um, derive from looking at other uh, comparables in the space. Um, we've actually hit a lower number than that even in the previous quarter. So when you take that as your base cost and then you have some packaging and some shipping that you have to add on top of that, we're still by far the lowest in the space. And then because we're producing an indoor product, we're able to generate an average selling price that's uh, in the medium to high range. On top of that, our sg &E is under control which is a big difference uh, compared to other companies. Other companies, in many cases, are spending more in sg &A than they have in revenue. Our last quarter was 21%, which is a reduction from 36% in the previous quarter. So I think all those factors together allow us to, to generate the uh, adjusted EBITDA that we have. Just being solid, being conservative, not you know spending like drunken sailors. Just, <laughs> just, just running it like a real business, to uh -huh. be honest with you. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's so, that's our objective. I mean, we're building a long-term sustainable business here, but we feel it's important to be, you know, have positive gross margin, po positive adjusted EBITDA today, and we want to, you know, I think that highlights to investors kind of the stewardship of us as a company and leaders. Great. Well, it's an exciting time for you guys. Congratulations. That is Organogram here at the NASDAQ, and I'm Deborah Borchardt reporting for the Green Market Report.